Science with the Gazways. I'm Mrs. Gazway. I'm Mr. Blake. Scientists always have rules in place so that everyone can conduct experiments safely. Today we are going to talk about those safety rules and make a very special project. Now we may be joined a little bit later on by our special assistant. However, it was past her bedtime and she was rather cranky, so she's currently inside taking a nap at the moment. So she may join us later, but don't worry, we'll have her uh, making the project here uh, this evening after she gets up. All right, we are going to read and take you through the rules. So there's 10 rules we want to follow in our exploration of exploring science here. Uh, rule number one is going to be read all instructions carefully and understand the purpose of the investigation before you begin the investigation. If you have had me in science, my number one rule is we always, always, always read the instructions first. But in this case, it is a video, so we will not be giving you written instructions. And so you'll be able to just follow along with us because we've read the instructions and we know what we are doing. Rule number two understand and follow all safety procedures at all times. We want to be safe and have a safe environment in science because we don't want anybody to get hurt. In my classroom, I make my students sign a safety contract and we go over all the safety rules. Um, go ahead and go over those safety rules with your parents. Rule number three, dress appropriately for investigations, whether in the laboratory or outside in the field, or in our case, in our backyard. It's always a good idea to wear a, to wear a lab coat if you have one or wear an old shirt. Also, um, some kind of safety protection, like eye protection in some cases. Not everything that we do will require you to wear something, but sometimes it might. I am wearing safety goggles, and Mr. Blake, he wears glasses, so he is just gonna wear his glasses. I let my students wear their glasses instead of wearing the safety goggles, and that is just fine. Rule number four. Always pay attention in the laboratory or outside in the field. If you're not paying attention, something could get spilled or broken, or you can mix the wrong ingredients. Rule number five, dispose of waste carefully according to your teacher's directions. We will tell you where to dispose of your waste. Please, please, please make sure that you clean up after yourself. Number six, report any spills or accidents to your teacher immediately. In our case, that would be your parents. Number seven, keep your work area clean and free of clutter. You wanna have a clean area so that you don't accidentally spill um, and different ingredients on something else or spill your mixture and then get everything all sticky or accidentally move something over and it fall off the table. Number eight, do not touch any investigative materials without your teacher's permission. In this case, again, it will be your parent, but this is really important for the younger kids. If there's materials and stuff that you're not sure what it is, don't touch it until your parent lets you know because it could be something that could harm you or something like that. Number nine, Always wash your hands with soap and water after completing a science investigation, especially when working with an unknown substance or live organisms. It's always a good idea to wash your hands. And finally, number 10. Most importantly, always follow your teacher's instructions. During this video, you will follow our instructions, but please, please, please still follow your parents' instructions during these experiments. So if you follow those 10 rules for our safety, you will be A-OK -okay and you're going to have a lot of fun. One of the things that you can make at home to be able to protect your clothes is you can make your very own lab coat. You don't need a very fancy one like we have because sometimes these cost a lot of money and maybe they'll be hard to get shipped to you right now. So that's okay. So what, we, what we're going to do is we, you can get an old t-shirt from home. You can buy t-shirts at the store or you can use whatever's lying around. I suggest that you, if you can, it doesn't have to be, um, use some a t-shirt that's a little bit bigger. Like these are Mr. Blake's shirts, and so these would work good for me or even Alyssa. So use your mom or dad's or older brother or sister's using their old t-shirts, that would be the best. And make sure before you go rummaging around to find a shirt that you get their permission first. I had some shirts that uh, have some stains on them and whatnot that would be a perfect example and perfect solution to use for our lab coats. So make sure you get permission uh, before you go cutting or decorating anything up. And also, I know I said white t-shirts, but I'm pretty sure this could work with any color t-shirt or anything that you have. There are several different ways that you can make these t-shirts. You can have them and you can cut a... Cut a line down the middle and then put buttons on it. You could cut a, a line down the back, put buttons on it. Um, if you cut a line down the front and you don't know how to sew or you don't have buttons, then you can just draw buttons on there. 
Um, or you could just not even cut your shirt up at all. You could just draw a pocket, draw a line down the middle, draw buttons, and then make it colorful. You can make it colorful using Sharpies or even regular markers. If you use regular markers, you're gonna have to ask your parents how to set it so that when you wash it, the colors don't bleed out. So the cool thing about making these lab coats is there's not necessarily a right or wrong way to do it. There's lots of variations. Um, as you can tell, ours were tie dyed and they look very different. Um, this was part of a project where we actually tie dyed about 15 or 20 lab coats and they all turned out way different and all unique in their own way, just like you guys as our science explorers. So we're gonna have some fun making these. And uh, like we said, be creative as you're making these. Have uh, mom or dad uh, take some pictures of what you're doing and be sure to post the final product of what you made on our our uh, video here so we can see what you guys are doing. So now we are going to show you how to make a lab coat if you do not want to cut up your t-shirt. So Mr. Blake is going to take the t-shirt, lay it down flat on the table. He's going to take a yardstick or a ruler and see it kind of try and find the center. Make sure too as you do this if you are using impermanent markers um, this is a good uh, science table we have that it's okay it's it's black so if we get stuff on it it's not a big deal uh, but if you were doing this say at your kitchen table or uh, something like that uh, you might want to think about getting a piece of cardboard or you could use um, a trash sack if you had to or a brown paper sack um, something to put down on the table just so that you're not uh, leaving markers uh, on your table because your mother would probably not like that very well So I'm going to find roughly the middle. I'm going to draw my line. My shirt's kind of wrinkly, so my line is <laughs> my line is not very straight. It's going to be very unique for sure. And if you didn't have a yardstick during this, uh, you could just get something that's okay uh, to use a marker against. Um, you could get, uh, again, get a piece of cardboard. Um, you could get uh, various things, just something that gives you a straight edge. And if you don't have a straight edge, just, just eyeball it and wing it. And like, like I said, you don't have to use black. You can use any colors that you would like. So it might look something like this. Mr. Blake is now going to draw on buttons. You can do it on the right or the left side of the line. It's whatever you would like. And you can draw them however you would like. Can I draw them on the right and left? Mm, you want to. You can just leave these black. You can outline them in black and color them in with different colors. Again, it is completely up to you. Not a very good, <laughs> not a very good button drawer. All right, on our lab coat, you can either draw on a pocket. So we have a couple of pockets here. You can either draw on one or two pockets, or you can have an adult help you and you can sew on a pocket. But today, we don't have any thread or a sewing machine or anything like that. So we are just going to draw on our pocket. I know you have some students who are uh, relatively good sewers that could sew on a pocket. Okay, Mr. Blake will show you his pockets. And then what you can do is you can draw pins or test tubes or anything like that inside of your pockets. So it's just up to you what you would like to draw inside your pocket. Maybe a pencil, um, anything you'd like. So, your lab coat could look something like this. I went ahead and put a ruler, a couple pencils, a pen, a little test tube in my pocket. I drew a couple more pockets down here on the bottom because you can never have too many pockets in your lab coat. And also colored the buttons blue. You can also put a name tag on your um, lab coat shirt. You can put it wherever you'd like, but probably up at the top on the left or right side. Um, just gonna draw like a rectangle or whatever shape you would like your name tag to be. 
I like it when the students put scientist and then your first and last name. So Mr. Blake could put scientist Blake or scientist Gasway. So it may look something like this. I put scientist Mr. Blake, drew myself on there for security reasons, put my sweet beard as well. That's important. All right, you can also um, add some pictures, add some different shapes, just make you unique. Um, let's say that you like the color pink or orange. Go ahead and draw orange or pink stripes on it. Um, draw, say you like hearts, draw a bunch of hearts. Say you like animals, draw some animals. Just do whatever you wanna do because it is your own personal lab coat. So have some fun when you're doing this. As I said, be sure and have your adults uh, take pictures of these as you're doing it. We like to see what you're working on. So take those, uh, share them on our video so we can follow along with what you're doing. We wanna see those things, have some fun with it. And uh, can't wait to see what you guys come up with. Also make sure you share our video, you like our page, you do all those things. We can't do it. Uh, we can't have a fun show without the support of you guys. All right, we're also going to show you how to make a slit down the middle. Okay, so this is um, Alyssa's lab coat. So we're just gonna show you how to cut the slit down the middle, and then I'm going to let her decorate it however she wants to. Do you want the slit in the middle? Yes, please. Cut. So, so this one's a little bit smaller, so I'm gonna do kind of the same thing and lay it on my table here. Um, our table is long and skinny, so it works to, to lay it sideways, but try to roughly find the middle of it. You could have somebody help you with this. And then I'm gonna use my straight edge to kind of follow along and make sure that I'm only cutting through one side of the shirt. That would not be good if you cut through both sides. So I'm gonna cut through. Our assistant is apparently awake. Oh, did you wake up? Look, Daddy's cutting your shirt. Look. Look, Daddy is cutting your shirt. Now you can decorate it. Are you excited? What colors are you going to put on your lab coat? I don't know yet. You don't know yet? Are you going to So when you're done, lab? it should look something like this. So like I said, as you're cutting it, be sure that you only cut through the front side, or if you're cutting on the back, you only cut through the back side, uh, versus accidentally cutting through both sides, because then you'd have two pieces that aren't really gonna work very good together. All right, and remember, you can add buttons, like up and down one side, and then cut a, a slit hole to put the buttons in. You could make snap buttons. You could do it however you would like. Um, like Mr. Blake said before, you could use safety pins. You could use Velcro several several different ways there's lots of different ways you can do it as we said we want you to be creative we want you to have some fun uh, so i think that pretty much wraps up today's video as uh, we need to get uh, uh, melissa started decorating hers so she can show it off we'll be sure and, and post pictures of what she did and how she designed hers in our comments uh, when we're done after she's completed her project uh, but again we we miss you guys uh, but we're so looking forward to seeing what you come up with uh, be sure and put in the comments uh, too that you're watching what you're doing um, show us those things because we may have somebody that's watching this video that's uh, not uh, in Mrs. Gasway's class. So please uh, comment on there where you're watching from. See you next time on Exploring Science with the Gasways. Bye! Bye.